Welcome to Advanced Nurses. We connect with nurses who inspire other nurses by sharing their experiences. And so we're able to bring that information to you. Hi, I am the Education Consultant with Advanced Nurses at ACD4N. And today I have the pleasure of meeting with Ms. Rose Washington. Ms. Rose Washington is going to give us a brief description about what she does. And also, we're going to be talking about the Afrotech 2023 event this year. So we're going to be kind of diving into the kind of, you know, what the details of what went on in that event. And then also some of the whisperings that like happen post the event and maybe exploring maybe some ways that we could improve similar events and looking forward to some other events that are going to be coming up within this year and the upcoming year that I think nurses should really consider attending. And if you are not within healthcare or you're not a nurse at all, it just like you're just uh, a professional who really is interested in understanding more about the advancements within technology and a connection between technology and what you do every day, I think that you should really explore these events. I really, really encourage anyone, people of color, uh, specifically black folks, to attend these events. These events are very Afrocentric. And for the most part, they really are about empowering us to be more knowledgeable about the advancements of technology. So with no further ado, I'm going to ask Miss Rose Washington to just, again, give us a brief description about what she does and also what led her to the Afrotech 2023 event this year. Ooh, thank you for that warm introduction. Um, good afternoon and Thank you for inviting me to kind of just speak on my experience. So just as a background, I do work in social service. Um, I do mainly like barrier remediation. I help individuals stabilize their life, do career development, um, financial counseling, and personal goal setting. Um, so some people may not see the correlation, but my job is about 20% barrier remediation and another 80% documentation inside of a uh, database, in fact, inside of two systems. So I spent a lot of time in front of my computer. I spent a lot of time not just getting in notes, but um, doing other like, you know, data entry really, and then running reports after um, to kind of measure success in the work that I do. Um, with that being said, it really drew me to Afrotech considering that technology is shaping the world we live in, um, one. And then two, the work that I do is very much impacted by uh, technology. For ex example, one of the uh, main, I guess, um, vendors, but also they, they had an event there that I registered for, but the list was long. So they put me like on a little waiting list, but it was Salesforce. Salesforce, um, is a system that I use at work. And so I'm very excited to learn about more things that Salesforce could do. I was excited about the opportunity to meet with individuals who are part of, you know, the uh, crafting of the website, but also the improvements and also knowing what it looks like for other sectors, you know, like how they also encounter Salesforce. So for many reasons, I was drawn to Afrotech. I also am an African-American woman. So the idea of meeting people in that more technical space who look like me, um, it was, it was just like a win-win, right? So I'll be honest, when I looked at the ticket calls, I wasn't too excited. And I, and I, I was maybe like a month out before the event when I started to get really interested in it. So the price was about seven plus, 700 plus, And, um, that I didn't want to commit to. So I started to look at their schedule. And the cool thing about it, if you go up to enough conferences, you can see how the day is broken down. And, it, and from there, you kind of extract what's the value, right? So um, as the host said, there has been some after talk about the value if people are into it. Uh, for me, I immediately seen that there were sessions on leadership, um, leadership for women, leadership um, in moving a remote workforce, um, just moving a, a remote workforce forward, things like that really caught my attention, pulled me in. And um, what I liked about Afrotech is that they put all their events in one place. Even if it was a simple little party, 
to hardcore networking, all of it was in one place. So I was able to kind of pick apart what I wanted to do, pay for things individually. The only thing I couldn't do from what I did pay for was just go inside of the actual, um, in certain sessions. I'm glad you said convention center because I was able to get in. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. Mm -hmm. This is just between you and I. Mm -hmm. I did go into the exhibit hall. So the first day, I came in about the Thursday. So that was my first opportunity to go into the exhibit hall. There was security there. Older lady, she was overwhelmed. So people were just going in and out. And I did go towards um, the latter part of the day. So no one stopped, my sister and I, and we had an awesome time. As soon as we walked in, it was a lot of vendors. Um, it was different stations, giving out a lot of freebies, you know, everyone loves it. But I also got to learn a little bit more about the forces that are behind the bigger um, networks that we consume and also the, the powerhouses that kind of push things forward in technology. So that was great for me. Um, I've seen some stuff that I really think people would enjoy, right? Tesla was out there and he had a big vehicle out there. They were doing it. professional headshots. Um, there was a lot of black owned businesses that were being able to promote their products and then really cool there was things from like um beauty products to uh, health insurance companies that all were represented but really showcasing how they merge with um with technology so it was helpful so overall i had a great experience um with that day and the second day as well was able to go into the exhibit hall and just kind of be in the space but i did not actually go into sessions because they did have a lot of security and they were checking badges and i think that's only fair right so um and i'll say this when the actual conference day ended there were different events to attend google did uh two day sessions of a four events so from 11 a.m to 3 was one session and from four to eight on a thursday and that friday of um, Afrotech, they had, it was like a, basically a party Thursday and Friday. And what was pretty cool is they had the event on a morning session and the evening session. It was free food, music. I mean, it was a great space to network in and it wasn't, it didn't feel too clubby. Um, just a great space for um, people to network. I liked the way Google approached that as just a person who was just taking in the environment. Um, there was cute little things they did, such as giving out like milk and cookies. And when you got inside, there was unlimited um, beverages. Everyone had the choice of drinking alcoholic beverages or not and food, right? So as a person just peeking in, more moments like that does add to, okay, you know, saying like, well, you know, I came at a great time. Overall, would I say my, I'm going to rate my experience. I think this will help our listeners. One being awful, right? That's just the rating. 10 being amazing. I had about an eight. I'm, I'm gonna give it about an eight. It was a good space to be in. It was nice for me to see people that look like me um, just moving about. And I did wanna add this. It wasn't just black Americans, but a lot of Africans straight from the, con con from the continent. Continental Africans. Okay. Continental Africans in the house and i love there was parts of africa that was being represented uh with beauty and education right so it was it was it was a really powerful space to be in and there were private events and public events so, and i say that because knowing the right persons could have got someone or just make the right connection could have got someone in a big space in a big room and that matters i guess for everyone's um how everyone is going to you know define their experience overall had a great time would go back you said an eight out of 10. So this is what I want to hear. If you're saying that you had an eight out of 10 experience, I want to know what could have improved, <laughs> right? What, yeah, what were the two points? Because was this your, was this your first time going to Afrotech event? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny to say event because they have smaller events throughout the year and then they also have the conference. So this is my first time ever experiencing any Afrotech uh, events. Okay. The reason why I asked the reason why I asked that question is so if somebody gives something in my opinion an eight out of ten rating right but it's something that they really enjoyed right they really didn't have too much bad things to say about it but they just left two points off the table in my mind I'm thinking well where are you comparing it to why they didn't get the ten 
right? But that's just how I think. Mm. So I would like you to tell me what happened to those two additional points. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. So I'm going to start here. You know, the one of the perks of social media is I think nowadays we're all kind of having this feeling of, you know, you have a thought and you're thinking it's just you. And then you click on the social media, whatever platform, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, you just, you hear something, you're like, I was thinking that, you know, and sometimes that's the excitement of it is that people are connecting thoughts and realizing, oh, it's not just me that feels this way. Right. So I was eager to learn. And that is what I will say um, I'm going to, I value. So someone may not, if someone was coming there just for partying, they, they, they're going to say they had a good time, right? If the person likes Afro beats. If they like, you know, dressing up and being out, good food. Those things were provided in Austin. Um, Cause just to be clear, that's where the conference took place is in Austin, Texas. If someone wanted to see how different sectors of um, technology, like their headquarters and, and kind of even get a peek in. They could have stayed in Austin and had a great time peeking in those different companies. So I think for that, someone could probably rate it 10. For me, I was looking at what I learned, right? Uh, I thought to myself, I could have maybe learned a little bit more about tech, made a little bit more connections. Um, maybe if the cost of the ticket was a little less, I would have definitely put this thing at a 10 because it would have gave me access to the actual conference. So just for clarification, it sounds like you're saying cost was an issue. Can you kind of break down that as far as that? Because like you're saying about like reaching out to others or seeing things that's going viral or streaming uh, in social media, I like to consider that reality testing where like sometimes you have something that's in your mind and you think it's just an original thought. And then, you know, the beauty of social media especially in those comment sections or how TikTok just allows people to just have an open mic <laughs> rating conversations where they're just rating all kinds of experiences and it goes viral. And then all, everybody else is like confirming that reality. Like, you know what? I kind of thought that way too, but I thought it was just me. So it sounds like you did some reality testing um, through looking at some content that was streaming about, uh, about the Afrotech 2023 event. And you said, oh, wow, I think I got some confirmation that maybe some people were feeling the same way I was feeling. But yeah, so I got that part. But the part I really wanted to find out about is that cost piece. What was the uh, breakdown from what you experienced as far as the, the cost of different, either the whole entire event or maybe parts of the event or maybe even events that were adjacent to the event, to the main event? So, uh, to dive into your question, the, so you, I mean, as we said, you know, the first part, boom, wanted to learn a little bit more. Um, the, the cost definitely was a deterrent for me just diving into the whole conference, right. And just kind of getting the full experience. So I had to pick through what I felt was affordable, what I was seeing the value, what I could extract value from, um, in looking at the schedule, which turned me off. Which I should say turned me off. Some things I was kind of turned off in sense of like the value was seeing who the speakers were, who were, um, there were people that I really, I'll say this, got in, I, there were people I really wanted to see and I was excited about, but not for tech reasons. Like Pastor Ture supports Afro Tech every year. Anyone knows Pastor Ture is a big church in LA. Um, he's also married to Sarah Jakes, Pastor T. Jakes' daughter. I didn't even know those worlds would have collided, right? So I'm inspired when I see people, you know, bridge those gaps between religion, healthcare, social services, and say, look, this is how technology is going to move, how it's moving us forward. Um, I just realized I wouldn't have thought of him in a tech space, so I didn't get excited for it. The, one of the key speakers was Issa Rae. Um, she is very much in tech, and a powerhouse behind her is HBO. So one of the things that I noticed was that technology, which makes sense, is being blended with media. And because media, social media, because all those things are taking place, I could possibly see where someone could look and say, this is great for social media, 
but I could have been looking for tech. That's why I said everyone's rating is definitely going to vary depending on what they wanted. Um, so there was a lot of influencers in the building, right? Social media influencers that we mainly know from Instagram and TikTok. Some of them are mainly known for doing like fashion. They were in the building. And I think they were in the building if you think about it, because there's some like technical skill that someone can argue. They have technical skills in uh, creating content, editing it, editing the content, putting it out there. Someone could say these are technical promoting, promoting their platforms. I believe, and this is not 100% factual, um, but there was a question that went viral on TikTok, like saying, like, how did social media people get there for free? But I do believe it was the platforms behind them, like the TikToks, the Instagrams. I believe those people are paying for their tickets, not necessarily um, Afrotech. That's a very good point because the truth is that would make perfect sense because those companies understand that it's the influencer, it's the person that goes viral that makes people think, you know what, maybe one day I'll build enough content for me to go viral. I have no, anybody, <laughs> anybody yeah. enjoying content here at ACD4N should know there's no goal on my end to go viral. My goal is to empower, and everybody uses this technology in their platform for different reasons. But if you think about it, it's the, it's your viral moments. It's your, it, it's your, your, you know, your YouTuber that has, you know, has grown their, their followers and their subscribers, you know, over a month or a year or whatever, double, triple, three times, four times that actually motivates YouTube. So YouTube needs people who are committed and TikTok and Instagram needs people, Facebook, it needs people who are committed to using their platforms uh, to, to go viral. When you think about Twitch, for example, why wouldn't you not want to have a Kai Sinet be the face because you see that he is bringing in a lot of numbers people are using a lot have a lot of watch time a lot of view view uh view time and a lot of uh, attention because essentially this is a, when you talk about social media you're really talking about view time and holding people's attention and so those influencers they have found the magic ticket whether it's your keith lee's talking about food a food critic mm -hmm. whether it's you know people who there is a lady and I don't remember her name, but I probably just put an image of her up here. She, I think is that she's a Jamaican nurse that cooks. And that's the thing. Like uh, she has a lot of people that follow her because she kind of blends the two worlds, you know, her being a, a, a Jamaican and her cooking and then her being a nurse, a lot of people kind of converge on her content. And she also was on the food network. So she's like, she's been able to kind of build up a following. Mm -hmm. um, and so the point that I'm making is it is individuals like that that if you're following their content, they bring more people in because more people say, you know what, maybe I'll go viral too, or maybe I like sharing my thoughts and this is something I want to do and replace, like to replace my, you know, the work that I do that maybe you don't find as uh, purposeful or maybe not as excited about, but you could, you find excitement in the social media space. I'm only saying all of this because prior to the actual event, like, you know, the days leading up to the event, before the event actually started, I, I reached out to someone who I was aware of, a nurse practitioner actually, who was saying that she was gonna be going to the Afrotech Fest. And and I kind of just gave her like a heads up, like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of influencers on Instagram. They're talking about like how they're going to be sharing, you know, certain topics. They're gonna to be panelists in certain rooms. So I was just kind of explaining like, you know, it seemed like a lot of influencers would be there. And I think because it was her first time attending, she. She kind of like said, oh, no, I don't think so. Because I think for her, she immediately thought when I said influencers, like like Afrotech to some degree was going to be dumbed down to an, uh, to an influencer event. And she sat, I think she took that more so as a critique, even though it didn't happen yet. So kind of maybe I sound like a hater. I don't know. Because when I was saying that, you know, a lot of like influencers, I think for most people, when they think about Afrotech, they're kind of thinking like, oh, this is a great event to get away from those people, right? Not realizing that those people actually use those quote, quote you people, they're, they're you know? using technology in a way that yeah. they're, they're using in, 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 in many cases, it is their lifeline. Like yeah. there's almost no downtime where they're not using technology because whether they are sharing their content or editing their content or developing their content or networking with other content creators, they're using technology in a lot of different ways. And like, for instance, you had mentioned Issa Rae, you know, even with her, whether it's her with HBO 
or her with her experience having her YouTube show, you know, because we get insecure coming out of a YouTube show that she wrote. And so, you know, this is a person with that experience and only someone who is a content creator who edits their content has to be worried about the type of cameras they're using and lighting and all that kind of stuff can really put that kind of, you put those kind of skills to in action for you to have quality content. So it's very tech heavy, but at the same time, I think people just didn't want to see influencers or all these kind of adjacent folks who pre who are perceived, right? Perceived, yeah, perceived adjacent, word. you know, to technology folks being in a space where for at that ticket price, uh, I think a lot of people wanted to kind of like hope that maybe a Mark Zuckerberg ish person was in the room, or maybe there was opportunities to actually apply for work within some of these companies. So exactly. like, right. Yeah. Cause if I'm going to pay a big ticket, my mind is like, well, I hope I can put an application in. And so we need to talk about that too, because from what I understand a years prior, there was a lot more because of the timing. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot more focus on getting people into tech. So there was a lot more as far as like professional recruitment, like work recruitment um, kind of opportunities yeah. than this year. Is you know what? what? To your point, I don't know. So I had to do my little, my research after, right? So as I said, this is our critiquing time. Um, I didn't pay attention closely to what happened um, previous years with Afrotech. So my, my research is coming from this year and comparisons that other people have, you know, um, giving me the critique on. So some people did say um, with the big layoffs in tech, they were expected to go to Afrotech and meet with some of the CEOs of these, you know, our big tech companies. Um, and kind of like maybe, I guess, make the connection for employment. Um, there were individuals who said they, they did not have that experience. They felt like there were vendors there collecting information, but not necessarily collecting resumes for employment opportunities. I'll put it that way. And I can't, what I've seen on the floor wasn't that, right? So I can say that from my experience, to get the smallest item, there was this kind of, you know, please sign up here, give us your information. Even to go to the Google party, there was a mandatory registration and you can link your um, LinkedIn account, any social media links and your resume. Like those things were the options when you, signed up to go to their event. However, I did hear people say they, in comparison to last year, they felt like there wasn't certain powerhouses. Um, Google was in the building, but I heard last year, Amazon was in the building as well, and they were not present this year. So those were things I think people felt and they noticed. Um, those were some of the bigger critiques when people talked about what they wanted to extract from the Afrotech 2023 conference. Um, some people said they wanted to make bigger and harder tech connections, and they felt as though that oppor those opportunities weren't provided. The next part was just like navigating the city, right? So the cool thing about Austin is things are fairly new. Austin has had its, you know, we all know, has had its burst in population, and like a lot of headquarters for companies or tech companies have planted their feet in Austin. So getting around Austin, um, enjoying Austin, the social part of it, that part was kind of easy. But there was little things that I just thought was normal that I heard in other people's review where it was, it really wasn't so pleasant in the sense of leaving a hotel to go down to the convention center, right? The ones that were in the neighborhood obviously were um, sold out quickly. They were packed. You know, me being a month out from the event, getting on the ball to go, I had to stay a little further away. Getting into the city was maybe, let me see, 13 to $15. Getting out every day when it was time to go out a little further to go back home, no matter if it was early afternoon, evening or night, it was always between 35 to $55. I mean, even if you shared an Uber, you still were hitting those high numbers, right? So a lot of the events, spaces, did not have the um, capacity, you know, just can take on the capacity of people who had signed up. So imagine 
signing up for an event, paying for the event. And someone like me, which I did see quite a few attendees did the same thing I did, where they didn't focus heavily on being in every session, but they did take any other events that you can pay separately for. Imagine paying for those events, being prepared, waiting in line, and being told like, oh, you may not even make it in. Or just being told like, nope, we're at capacity. Sorry, guys, you won't make it here. That was a theme. And I heard it was a theme that happened last year as well. So some someone kind of did prep me on like, don't get caught up in holding your breath for events. There was a lot of things happening at one time. That could be good or bad, right? But I at one point felt like, I wish I went to this and I wish I went to that. I, I look back at things and I'm like, how did I miss it? But it was a lot of things going on. But I did think for some people, they lost out by paying for things that they still didn't get to enjoy. For example, we paid for a day party. Jermaine Dupree ended up being the surprise host. And I have video footage out um, that can be inserted at this point. We can see there was a long line and it was still like, it was almost impossible to get in, right? So then it was like, well, let's go to the next event. And by the time we go to this next event, there still was a line and they were like waiting until like the very moment um, to let people in. But at that point, I had tickets to another event. And I'm going to give an example. This one was called the Jola Festival. So it had a comp competition component to it. There were women serving food there. Um, you can see they were the cooks. So it was like authentic Come on, you know, authentic Joloff, all right? So you know what that's like. Um, it, that, that event, you got in there, a long line to get in. And then I was told it's just for the entry and the test tasting. And that wasn't the end of the world because the test tasting was a nice size box of different foods that they'd collect, you know, put together. And I would taste those foods and rate them. The problem was the line for that was a whole nother line. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I can't do this. I'm like, I paid $40 to come in here. So I'm like, let me just peep out the scene. It was still a nice scene if someone just would sit down there, a live band. To add, that was not near the convention center. That was about a 15 minute walk away from the convention center. Now for me who wanted to see Austin be a tourist, great, but it wasn't necessarily the closest event. And I didn't spend too long there. I, I think I could have maybe made the best of it, but at the end of the day, even if someone's making the best, that is not what people pay for. And I think that's the theme around Afrotech is that people can make the best of what the experience was, but I think there were people who genuinely wanted more. For a tech person, um, and that's the two points that I didn't give. I could understand why someone would be disappointed about what the experience provided. Now, it's funny because I think I think what happens oftentimes in events like this, and I know I brought up the CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus, that that event that happens in DC, the annual event. I think what happens is that there is an expectation that maybe if you go there and you're spending your money, that you want a particular thing to happen. Like maybe you mm -hmm. want to advance professionally and so you think to yourself like you know these are the great places these are places i should be like for example if you were really into politics like you want wanted to become a politician you wanted to become some type of whether it's local or like you know like city rep or state level you know that those individuals are going to be at cbc right that cbc weekend where you can really engage or cbc week where you can really meet and engage with those individuals you know that it's going to be they're going to a lot of them are going to be out there but the truth is a lot of people are going out there to relax and party. and party. So when they go out, they're not thinking, oh, okay, great. I'm going to be suited and booted. I'm going to have a big stack of, of business cards because even though it's CBC week for them, they look at it is as a time to kind of unwind and for them to engage with their peers and their colleagues in a different way, right? Outside of that work setting. So some business, but a lot of pleasure, right? And so, what it sounds like it happened with the Afrotech Fest, because I know at least again for me, my pers my perspective or at least of my my assumptions of what would I would expect from an Afrotech event would be that you would be very focused on you know getting you know jobs in that in that sector because we know that a lot of those jobs have very handsome salaries. There's a lot of great opportunities to get bonuses and promotions. And, you know, these are leading companies that's really changing the way we do a lot of things in society. 
So therefore, a lot of people who especially like I hear what you're saying, Rose, when you said, well, you know, consider someone who actually is in tech, they probably had even higher hopes. I mean, because just imagine if you're working for like a smaller company, for example, like a small startup, and you're looking at an opportunity to kind of get into one of those bigger companies. You're yeah. like, wow, I want to network. I want to be able to see if I can talk to this person and that person, and maybe they can get my name. Because a lot of jobs are still like that, but especially in a lot of those select companies like your Fangs or your um, uh, Mangs or whatever you want to call it, like, you know, Meta, Amazon, um, um, Facebook. Facebook, well, that's Meta. <laughs> so you know, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, Microsoft. Yeah. People want to get into Google. Mm -hmm. People want to get into those um, companies. And for the most part, it's like as they try to get into those uh, companies, you know, you realize like you know, I probably do better if I know somebody. So yeah. investing in going to Afrotech for some people was investing in their future, right? So it wasn't as simple as being around people who have shared experiences and shared interests it was Perfect. very much about i'm trying to make a change i want to make an impact i'm investing in this because now we have to talk about the money part of this so because if i'm talking about investment you have to think about so, from a, fi from a financial standpoint add. please add please add the financial so details. one of the cool things that afrotech does is they have student tickets they have general admission and then they have corporate sponsors right so one of the persons I was with noticed that a lot of people had corporate sponsored badges. So in some sense, I kind of laughed because I said, maybe that's why they have that high ticket there. I mean, it's technology, right? They're bringing a lot of technology into the convention center. I mean, when you go by the sessions, some of them are labs. They're not really considered like just, you know, information sessions. You're engaging with technology, you're touching it, you're feeling it. So I can understand why to some extent, why it may be a cost a ticket, right? Um, with that, it's just a lot of people that work, you know, receive corporate sponsorship, which got them in the door. One young lady did a video saying that her company almost denied her um, the conference because the sessions were 30 minutes and they didn't feel like 30 minutes is enough time for um, someone to get like a hearty, you know, like knowledge, uh, I guess a knowledge-based discussion to go on, right? In 30 minutes. I, I also don't know if CEUs were offered. You know, if someone could really use any certificates or any continuing education um, credits, opportunities for it to better. I did not see that. So I could be wrong, but I didn't hear that. And if sessions are 30 minutes, then for me, I doubt it. Compared to the Congressional Black Caucus Conference, is usually an hour plus session, right? To the point where they have to tell people like, we can't take any more questions. We're we're going way over time. Someone else needs to come in, come needs needs to come in and use the conference room, right? I didn't feel like that was something I seen going on, or did I hear was going on? And um, that's why I said the cost. It could have been because less, the, and for those layoffs. Be, by the, if you if you decided that if you decided that you wanted to, um, let's say, sign up. To attend the event like the general fee like let's say within 48 hours of the actual first day of the event what was that fee that that price point looking like yeah so that's why you hear all these people kind of griping going on social media that price was a 700 plus ticket it was like 750 to 790 something like that it was it was pricey if you did it uh like maybe for me like i said again i started looking a month in um in advance to attending but right now so, so what afrotech did is they already have their tickets ready for next year afrotech will be taking place in houston texas and i do believe houston will be able to um accommodate the not just the well i guess the population of people that are coming in for this event but also just the, the different things they need to have in technical parts of it i think houston is another good place the demographics in houston i think would definitely enjoy uh an event like afrotech so cost wise the corporate sponsorship does impact how people want to go um excuse me how people get there and for more general attendees they'd have to lower the price and i feel like from the sessions and what i've seen last year there i feel like the afrotech um, you know, creators are trying to make it more of a general um, conference for black professionals, more of an open space that 
Again, and that, that makes sense if you consider we all encounter technology at some point. But that's the reason why I think the tickets, more reason why the tickets should be lower or there should be some in-between fares, right? I think there should be, in my opinion, the student ticket should not be 250. I think that's not an, that's too high for a student. And um, I don't necessarily think you even have to be college. I think you can be high school. And I think there should be a just, that should, should be lower. And I think there should be a medium cost for someone like myself who just kind of wants to get in the space and connect dots. So I, I think that's that's to be considered when you think about pricing. So that's a good point because it sounds like what you're saying is they should probably like like kind of stratify the the rates or at least compartmentalize who who yeah. who yeah. needs who needs what and then have price a price point that like is correlates with it. So for example, having students have, have, have a more affordable rate, because I know with CBC, uh, they they have rates where you can use codes that can drop the $200. Uh, I know for me, the CBC this year, it was a $200 admission fee. And with the code, of, uh, like there was a code that was being circulated uh, by uh, the, a medical uh, group that Essentially, you can use that code, and it did work. There was there were codes, yeah, discount yeah. codes. So maybe there were discount codes, and maybe people just didn't know of those discount codes for Afrotech. But maybe that's something that they could explore. I did um, Google just so and, you know, to see if I could find a code on it. And the code that came but had expired, and it was a code that was really for students. Okay, so great. Oh, so there was a student code. So then that's something people should think about having a code that having access to a code that they can use to reduce the the fee. Um, and I also think that there should be something said about individuals, which I'm sure they considered it, because it sounds like when you're saying that they had labs, that could be a part of it too. Because the thing about learning labs is essentially labs allow you to do more of the tactile piece of the learning. So it's yeah. not just viewing it or listening to someone explain something. You're now able to play around with it. You're able to kind of build something, design something. And I'm sure with all the information, whether they were collecting the attendees information so they can form a, a, um, a mailing list or whether they were using that information to send them anything that they were working on in the labs, and if, that, if they have not been doing that, they should think of doing that. Because if you work in a lab and you're working on like maybe just like the infancy of a project or you're playing around with something and you send it to yourself, that probably a smart way for a person to engage with that application more because then you can say, well, I built something through this app when I was at the Afrotech uh, event and now it's emailed to me and I can continue playing around with it or tinkering with it. And, you know, maybe I'll download this app or purchase this app or become a member and get a subscription mm -hmm. or something. So I could use this uh, technology a little bit more. But uh, again, so it sounds like as far as costs go, that, that was an issue. And I think, and I just want to say this before we end today. I think one of the things I, this is my personal critique, there's always been a branding around technology that technology is because of the fact that there is a known, you know, like projected high paying salaries within the tech sector. I think oftentimes the idea is that these individuals have the, have money to spend. I think the same could be said, maybe even like if there was like a med medical conference where there's just an assumption that these individuals are on the higher end as far as the salary. There's a just expectation that things could just be at a higher price point, maybe in a way to kind of like, it's about that kind of exclusivity. <clears throat> so and kind of cutting. That's a big part of it. I just, sorry to cut you. Mm -hmm. I want to no, add no, no, because- I don't, I don't mind it. I don't. That, that, and I mean, that's how you really do make things exclusive. If you, you put a price point and for those who can afford, they, <laughs> they're in the room, you know? Um, and that's why I'm saying that if they break it down, it might help. Because here, I'm going to say something that's like unpopular opinion. When it comes onto our community, we do, there's a theme. Because I'm not going to say we all struggle with it. But I do believe some of the developers and, you know, the, <laughs> the creators around Afrotech probably thought they, they want to put like a little, you know, because they pull the wool over our eyes with this. Not everyone is hypnotized by music and free food. You know, some people really did go there with an agenda. And I think sometimes for our community, we wrestle with really getting information and diving in if there's no music or sometimes just getting in the room. I'll say that if there's no music and entertainment, if there's not a star behind it. And 
sometimes not every not every moment is going to provide it. Sometimes. So I just want to say, an unpopular opinion, we wrestle with some times needing to be stimulated. Also, you know, there's this theme that Afrotech is a little, I just say theme, because it's through social media, right? That Afrotech is a place where people can do a lot of matchmaking. Um, there's a young lady who met her boyfriend last year. And then this year, she had a whole event. She had a whole matchmaking event and it was packed. Now, I'm, am I going to lie to you? No, I did sign up myself. It was at capacity, so I wasn't able to go. But those those are things, there are, those are themes that are running around Afrotech. So I think it's up for the creators and those who are in the in the discussion room about 2024's conference. I think it's for them to really get on social media, hear those themes. And I'm not saying that they have to go walk around and dispel everything, but I think it's important for them to know the voice of those who want to attend and the, vo the voice of those who did attend to hear what people are saying and at least try to improve the benefits of Afrotech for the overall good of black people in tech. That oftentimes when it comes on to the educational piece and the value added as far as education and how you can apply this to better your life outside of just being entertained, sometimes it is appeal to our, you know, to black folks to our community that we have to have this kind of infotainment piece to it. Like it can't yeah. just be yeah. information. It has to be entertaining. People have to be matchmaking. You know, people have to be talking about love and relationships. And then like that kind of stuff has to go out there in the atmosphere. Oh, if you're gonna go to Afrotech, you gotta go, you, you know, you gotta be on your, your best behavior because you may find your husband or may find your wife. And so while I think that stuff is cute and everything, I think the dangerous part of it is if you are invested in going into Afro the, the Afrotech event, thinking that you're going to be meeting people who, you know, recruiters from these major yeah, companies exactly. or yeah. even recruiters from startups, like, you know, the opportunity to kind of get your foot in the door, software developers, data analyst, uh, you know, junior data analysts who are trying to get their foot in the door somewhere and you invest again, making that investment into what you think is your future. And really it's a bunch of people socializing. There's a Jolof there a food yeah. festival, there's music going on, you know, there's, there's, there's events that you pay for that you can't get into. Right. It makes one wonder with the ticket price being that high and with all of those attendees that came out, who walked away with the money, yeah, you, you know, know it's like somebody that. stole my cheese. Right. So you want to know where, what happened? Yeah. What happened yeah. to the money? Like what happened to, the money i want to also know is there a is there anybody who is concerned about some of the whisperings that I, see the great thing about social yeah. media is that when people do put out a critique it does hold people's foot to the fire because at, at the same time like many festivals like I, i'm thinking even about like the fire festival that event you know it was the social media it was the influencers that really pushed hey let's go to this remote island and and party and there was no such party and uh, everything else was a fail so people going out there in the social media whether it is to report the failures of an event which we've seen the fire festival for example or people reporting and say hey you guys have to come here look i met my husband look this lady had a whole room because of the fact that she said she met somebody so it's it it, it doesn't go without saying that people will definitely attend these events with an expectation that things will go one way or the next but I think it's more so about having your own mind. If you're going to go to Afrotech Fest from the pattern that we've seen, unless something changes, it is quite possible that you may be in spaces with a lot of influencers. I know for me, going to the Essence Fest, I think that it would be appropriate. See, I think people probably were not thinking Afrotech would give Essence Fest vibes but they were disappointed that they got the essence essence fest vibes from afrotech when they were expecting it to be a little bit more exclusive especially because of that price point yeah. so you know these are things we need to consider especially as again i keep encouraging uh, black folks in particular to advance their knowledge and interest with you know in the technology space if i'm telling you hey do it do that, do that. And I'm telling you, I can't, I can't bother going to the Afro um, tech fest if it's about socializing and because those are not things that I'm particularly interested in. I can socialize right here, 
where I live. You know, there's there's enough of a business and professional networking scene here that I could actually do that. I don't need to get on a flight to Austin, Texas, just so I can mingle with people who are there with the sole purpose of partying, you know? And then again, you have people who weren't there for the sole purpose of partying and they spent their money to get exposure to something that was a little bit more higher quality. And then in, instead they got Essence Fest. No doubt, not down in Essence Fest. Essence Fest has been a successful event in New Orleans year over year over year so no this is not downing essence fest but essence fest is there for entertainment purposes so you expect to be entertained there i think for afrotech people expected to have um, a little bit more access to again recruiters uh, maybe learning more about the advancement of technology and kind of where things are going and then you're met with a jala you know food festival with music and you know and cookies and you know milk it's like google we're your recruiters we want to hear from you schedule a free consultation or send us an email at advanced nurses at acd4n.com or visit our websites www.advancednurses.info or www.acd4n.com We want to hear from you. Schedule a free consultation or send us an email at advancednurses at acd4n.com or visit our websites www.advancednurses.info or www.acd4n.com.